So, you want to get that corporate job working as an environmental engineer. How do you do that? Well, obviously you apply to whatever position or company has that opening. But like, what should you consider before applying? Like, how do you even get started? What's it really like once you get inside? Do you even like qualify for the job? You know, there's like a lot of questions to consider and I want to be going over that. I'm not going to directly answer every single question that I just asked specifically. I'm just giving you like a broad sense of what you should consider when applying for a corporate environmental engineering job and what it's really like once you're like inside, once you actually get in. Spoiler alert, it's not going to be good. If anything, it might be very disappointing for you to hear. So with that being said, let's begin. Welcome to the reality of corporate jobs. So the first thing you should really expect is that you're going to be seeing a lot of failure and rejection. So if you're like a fresh graduate, you know, just straight out of college, don't expect anything just because you graduated with a degree in like whatever field or even like engineering. Although the engineering field is like pretty stable and reputable, you're still competing against other people who have like engineering degrees. So you will get rejected as you apply to all these jobs. So long as you understand that there's only like one job opening and you know that there are say for example 20 other applicants, you know at the end of the day that there's only going to be like one winner. Only one person's going to get the job. So out of the other 20 applicants, one winner, that means 19 rejections. Still, try your hardest, you know, during the interview. Just think the worst case so you don't like get disappointed at the end. And if you ever do get rejected, you know, just move on into the next application. And good news, I guess even if you do get the job, still expect to be failing a lot as you progress, you know, as you just enter that job. You'll be messing up a lot and learning a lot on the way. The next one. Understand that what you learn in school and, you know, your university, it's not always applicable in like the real life situation. So for example, you might have learned a lot of math or calculus during your engineering coursework. These are like prerequisite classes for your engineering work. But you will most likely, 99% of the time, not be using calculus on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, it is good to have like that background knowledge and experience and you know, understand where that concept came from. But again, at the end of the day, I guarantee you, you won't be spending any time doing that at work. You're not going to be wasting your time solving like differential equations or anything. The same thing applies for like all general other knowledge. So things like elective classes whether it was like a designing course or a conceptual course, you will most likely not be spending any of your time on a calculator, like plugging in those numbers, just trying to get like some end perfect number result. Like you won't be having to do that for homework or, you know, spending all nighters doing that. There might be some cases where you might be doing some calculations for your work, but there will already be like a computer program that will spit out some number for you or just, you know, just make your life easier and helping you get that number. So. The most thing that you might have had to do was just like get a measurement out in the field, but it's not as complicated as you might have thought it would be during your schoolwork. And trust me, that computer program will definitely help you along the way. Just think of it in terms of like a business. You would not want to pay someone eight hours a day just for them to like solve this one number. Like you're wasting their time, you're wasting your time. Why would you want to spend like say $40 an hour, $320 a day just to have this one engineer spit out some number for you. They're not going to do that. It's going to be a waste of so much time and so much money. The third one about corporations, you should have realistic salary expectations. So if you're a new graduate and you expect to be making like over six figures and you have like no work experience, you're kidding yourself. Yes, you do want to make a lot because you know you worked hard a lot during school and you know that engineering is going to be a pretty reputable, stable career in the end. All that reward comes with time and experience. So don't expect a handout from some company thinking that they'll feel bad for you. They'll just move on to someone else who is willing to take less pay. I know it sounds like so merciless, so mean to you. And you as like an employee should negotiate your salary, but don't go like overboard on it. Still be realistic with them. I mean, come on, you made it this far into like the interview process. You know, you got the offer. Think one step ahead and pretend you are the business. Like see yourself in their point of view. See it from all angles. You're a planner here, you should be able to predict something like that. The fourth one, and this might make your blood boil, but expect hypocrites. So you're in this field as an environmental engineer, and you want to better the world, right? You want to lead it towards a more sustainable future and like save the turtles and everything. So you envision this world as like a utopia. And although it looks good in your mind and it sounds really good on paper, reality is going to hit pretty hard and you're going to be so disappointed. In the end, it's not what you expected. So you might be working for some company that says all these good things on their website. They're saying they're doing this thing and that thing. But behind the scenes, once you're actually inside of it, you realize that they're not doing anything about it. So it's only once you're inside that company do you see all the smoke and mirrors. I feel like I'm exposing some evil company, but in general, most of them are like this. They're not all what they seem to be. And again, what sucks is that you visit the company website, 
you might have been interviewing with the manager saying like, what do you know about the company? Like, what do you like about us? Why do you want to work here? It has that about us page and then you'll read all these wonderful things about it, saying that the company's doing this wonderful thing, and the events and they have all these nice pictures. But inside, once you're inside that company, it's pretty nasty and toxic and they don't even care about the environment, they don't even care what they're saying. They're all hypocrites, or maybe the majority of them are. Just expect that in the end. There's always gonna be corporate politics. And lastly, when push comes to shove, just be in it for yourself. You gotta be selfish here. So you've infiltrated the company. What you thought was going to be like a dream career ends up being a nightmare. Some companies don't care about the environment. Some of them don't even care about their employees. And you can't leave because like that's your only paycheck. That's the only thing that's keeping you afloat in your life. So what do you do at this point? You just gotta be selfish. I mean, the company's already depriving you. So you might as well squeeze out everything you can from this company. Take advantage of them, like not illegally, but if you know that they're exploiting you, then do what you can to get back as much as you can. Also understand that if you were to leave, like they will just replace you. I guarantee you they'll be able to hire someone within like a few weeks. Know that you are expendable. Trust me, they're doing just fine before you. They're still managing the company. They were still there before you and they'll probably still be there after you. It's just your position is gonna be like empty for a few weeks. So in the end, you can bet that they will still be fine without you. Don't try to be like too company loyal because every company is gonna survive, but no one person will. The company is a pretty big machine and losing just one member or one part of it, it's not gonna sink the whole boat. So just understand that. This is what it's like in a corporation. All right, yeah, so that's like the blunt truth working in a corporate job. In a big corporation, again, it's a whole big company with many moving parts, many people that, you know, just losing one person, one you think would be a key member, they'll survive. They'll be fine without them. They might not be as efficient, but trust me, they'll still float by, they're still gonna make profit, and it's gonna be you who's hurting the most. You who might be unemployed. You who has a family to feed. So just be warned. All right, so that's my take on it because I work for a corporation. I have a corporate job and I'm not saying anything bad about them, but this could be happening. This does happen to you know, other corporations. I just want you to be aware of that. So if you like the video and I guess like the point of view that I give, although most of it can be pretty negative, go share, like, and subscribe. I just give out like the blunt truth with whatever I'm dealing with. I'm not specifically bagging down on any one company or one field or one thing. I'm just giving out my perspective my warnings, both good and bad, of what I'm experiencing. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.